Volume 4, Esoteric Healing Problem remains fundamentally that of the one affected, the adjustment, as I have remarked above, have to be made from the other side, with the disciple standing ready to cooperate at the first indication of a willingness to recognize relationship and intention to cooperate in group service. This is a point which both parties, the disciple and the person reacting to his influence, need to consider. The disciple stands ready. The responsive party usually withdraws or approaches according to the urge of his soul or of his personality, probably the latter in the early stages. Eventually, however, he stands with the disciple in full cooperative understanding, and the trying time of difficulty is ended. It is not possible for me to enter into explicit detail in considering these problems connected with the heart and the life energy of the disciple. They are conditioned by his ray, the initiation for which he is being prepared, and the quality, evolutionary status and the ray of those affected. There are also difficulties and problems of a more subtle nature arising from the same cause, but not localized in certain definite human relationships. A disciple serves, he writes and speaks, his words and influence permeate into the masses of men, arousing them to activity of some kind, often good and spiritual, sometimes evil, antagonistic and dangerous. He has therefore to deal not only with his own reactions to the work he is doing, but also, in a general and specific sense, to deal with the masses whom he is beginning to affect. This is not an easy thing to do, particularly for an inexperienced worker with the plan. He fluctuates between the mental plane, where he normally attempts to function, and the astral plane, where the masses of men are focused, and this brings him into the realm of glamour and consequent danger. He goes out in consciousness towards those he seeks to help, but it is sometimes as a soul and then he frequently overstimulates his hearers, and sometimes as a personality and then he sees and enhances their personality reactions. As time goes on he learns, through the difficulties brought about by the necessary hard approach, to stand firm at the center, sending forth the note, giving his message, distributing directed love energy, and influencing those around him, but he remains impersonal, a directing agency only and an understanding soul. This impersonality which can be defined as a withdrawing of personality energy produces its own problems, as all disciples well know, there is nothing, however, that they can do about it but wait for time to lead the other person forward into clear understanding of the significance and esoteric meaning of right human relations. The problem of workers with individuals and with groups is basically connected with the energy of the heart and with the vivifying force of its embodied life. In connection with this problem and its reactions upon the disciple, certain definite physical difficulties are apt to occur, and with these I will shortly deal. It should also be pointed out that difficulties of rhythm are apt to occur, and problems connected with the cyclic life of the disciple. The heart and the blood are esoterically related, and symbolically define the pulsating life of the soul which demonstrates upon the physical plane in. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust 76 A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4, Esoteric Healing The outgoing and the withdrawing dual life of discipleship, each phase of which presents its own problems. Once a disciple has mastered the rhythm of his outer and inner life, 
and has organized his reaction so that he extracts the utmost meaning from them but is not conditioned by them, he then enters upon the relatively simple life of the initiate. Does that phrase astonish you? You need to remember that the initiate has freed himself, after the second initiation, from the complexities of emotional and astral control. Glamour can no longer overpower him. He can stand with steadfastness in spite of all that he may do and feel. He realizes that the cyclic condition is related to the pairs of opposites and is part of the life manifestation of existence itself. In the process of learning this, he passes through great difficulties. He, as a soul, subjects himself to a life of outgoing, of magnetic influence and of extroversion. He may follow this immediately with a life of withdrawal, of apparent lack of interest in his relationships and environment, and with an intense introspective, introverted expression. Between these two extremes he may flounder distressingly, sometimes for many lives, until he learns to fuse and blend the two expressions. Then the whole life of the accepted disciple, in its various grades and stages, becomes clear to him, he knows what he is doing. Constantly and systematically, both outgoing and withdrawing, serving in the world and living the life of reflection, play their useful part. Many psychological difficulties arise whilst this process is being mastered, leading to psychological cleavages, both deep-seated and superficial. The goal of all development is integration, integration as a personality, integration with the soul, integration into the hierarchy, integration with the whole, until complete unity and identification has been achieved. In order to master this science of integration whose basic goal is identity with the one reality, the disciple progresses from one unification to another, making mistakes, arriving often at complete discouragement, identifying himself with that which is undesirable until, as sole personality, he repudiates the earlier relationships. He pays the penalty again and again of misplaced fervor, distorted aspiration, the overpowering effect of glamour, and the many conditions of psychological and physical disarrangement which must arise whilst cleavages are being healed, right identification achieved and correct orientation established. Whilst this basic, inescapable and necessary process is taking place, a definite work is going forward in the etheric body. The disciple is learning to lift the energy, gathered from the lower centers, into the solar plexus and from that center into the heart center, thus bringing about a refocusing of the energies above the diaphragm instead of putting the emphasis below. This leads frequently to profound complications, which is, from the personality angle, the solar plexus center is the most potent, being the clearinghouse for the personality forces. It is that process of decentralization and elevation of the lower consciousness to the higher which produces the main difficulties to which the disciple is subjected. It is this process also which is going on in the world as a whole today, causing the appalling disruption of human affairs, culture, and civilization. The entire focus of humanity's consciousness is being changed, the selfish life characteristic of the man centered in his desires and consequently in the solar plexus. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust 77. A Treatise on the Seven Rays, Volume 4, Esoteric Healing. 
center is giving place to the decentralized life of the man who is unselfish, centered in the self or soul, aware of his relationships and responsibility to the whole and not to the part. This sublimation of the lower light into the higher is one of deepest moments to the individual and to the race. Once the individual disciple, and humanity as well, symbolizing the world disciple, has mastered the process of transference in this respect, we shall see the new order of individual service and of world service established, and therefore the coming in of the awaited new order. Of all these processes, the circulation of the blood stream is the symbol, and the clue to the establishment of the world order lies hidden in this symbology, free circulation of all that is needed to all parts of the great framework of humanity. The blood is the life, and free interchange, free sharing, free circulation of all that is required for right human living will characterize the world to be. Today these conditions do not exist, the body of humanity is so deep and its internal life disrupted. Instead of free circulation between all parts of the life aspect, there has been separation, blocked channels, congestion and stagnation. It has needed the terrific crisis of the present to arouse humanity to its disease condition, to the extent of the evil which is now discovered to be so great, and the diseases of the blood of humanity, symbolically understood, so severe that only the most drastic measures, pain, agony, despair and terror, can suffice to establish a cure. Healers would do well to remember this, and to have in mind that disciples and all good men and aspirants share in this universal disease of humanity which must take its toll psychologically or physically or both. The trouble is of ancient origin and of long established habit and inevitably affects the physical vehicle of the soul. Exemption from the effects of human ills is no indication of spiritual superiority. It might simply indicate what one of the masters has called, the depths of spiritual selfishness and self-satisfaction. The initiate of the third degree can hold himself exempt, but this is only because he has completely freed himself from glamour and no aspect of the personality life has any further power over him. All the ray types are equally subjected to these particular problems. The seventh ray, however, is more susceptible to the problems, difficulties and diseases incident to the bloodstream than are any of the other ray types. The reason is that this is the ray which has to do with the expression and manifestation of life upon the physical plane and with the organization of the relationship between spirit and matter into form. It is concerned therefore today, as it seeks to create the new order, with free circulation and with a consequently intended freedom of humanity from the ills and problems of the past. This is of interest to remember, and students would find it helpful at this time, if they want to cooperate intelligently with the happenings of the day, to collect and study all that I have written about the seventh ray of ceremonial order and magic. P. Diseases of the nervous system, due to the flow of energy to all parts of the body, directed by either the personality, some aspect of the personal lower self, or by the soul, via the brain, are many and become acute as the disciple nears initiation or becomes an initiate. Apart from the copyright copyright 1998 Lucas Trust. 78. A Treatise on the Seven Rays. Volume 4. Esoteric Healing. Physiological ills which this produces, there are many other conditions brought about by this inflow of force. The disciple becomes, 
for instance, overstimulated, and therefore overactive.